Hello and welcome to another episode of Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So, anyway, I decided I would build a, another tube preamp. Now, this is going to be for something that I've got coming that I'm very excited about. And a tube preamp would be a really good idea for it. I'm not going to reveal too much information about that, but I'm going to keep you guessing. So anyway, this is the circuit that I've used. I'm sure you've seen this circuit plenty of times before if you're familiar, familiar with tube circuits. I think I'm using a 12 EC8 or something, I can't remember. It's very similar to an ECC83 or 12XA7 if you're American. I have absolutely no idea what this one is. Okay, 12AE7. Well, that's, like I said, it's almost the same tube as a 12AX7, you know, got the two triodes in there. And it's all wired up. So anyway, I put a couple of transformers back to back to make a high voltage power supply for the tube, connect my microphone up to it, and it sounded terrible. It was all hum, through which some faint audio could be heard, so I think it's about time to make a better power supply. So we're gonna go back to the trusty breadboard, I still have the TL494 on there from one of the previous experiments. But it's wired up like this at the moment. I'm covering up the rest of the circuit because that's not on the breadboard at the moment, but if you want to have a look at it... There it is. And this is going to be my high voltage power supply for, well, the high voltage that the tube needs. Just want to make sure that this thing will oscillate. Right, so let's turn on the power and see what it does. No explosions, that's good, and we've got a nice square wave on the scope. Both channels seem to be working, so it's looking good. And with this potentiometer here, I should be able to adjust the frequency. Yep. So we can go up to about 180 kilohertz, although I don't think we will be going that high. We can go down to about 14 kilohertz by the looks of things. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to put that on about maybe 30. You see, transformers such as this one which, as you can see, I've already connected the voltage doubler to and a light bulb to regulate the, um, limit the current should something go wrong. These won't work on your standard 50 or 60 hertz mains frequency. You know, it's going to be something more like 50 kilohertz that a transformer like this is going to be more happy with, so... That's what we're doing. And as you can see, to make this chip oscillate, we need very few components. As a matter of fact, it will probably still work if I pull out this 100 microfarad, I mean, 100 nanofarad capacitor. And yes, indeed it does. So as you can see, <clears throat> so as you can see, that's just three components, and we've got ourselves a nice little square wave oscillator. So you can think of these two resistors here as just one resistor. So we've got resistor, capacitor, TL494, and a couple of square waves on the output. Well, I think it's about time to build up the rest of the circuit. Okay, so I've added the transistors that are going to drive the MOSFETs, although it's a passive driver circuit, but hopefully I've put them in the right way around. Let's see if we get our two square waves. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking very good. I can never remember, I've used two in 3906s here, I can never remember if it's... I can never remember which way around it is, if it's emitter, base, collector, or collector, base, emitter. But it looks as if I've got it right. Well, okay. 
I've built the circuit, and we're going to run some tests. So I've got the MOSFETs on a separate supply, which is being monitored on this little meter here. This meter is going to measure the voltage coming across these two capacitors. So I've got this on a variable supply. This is on a 12 volt supply. So let's turn it on and see what we get. Okay, we already have 27 volts across these capacitors with a 1.3 volts going in. So it's pretty good. It's only drawing about 4 milliamps. So I'm going to start increasing the supply voltage. And if we don't get enough voltage to power up a tube like this, See if we can get 100 volts. Yep, 100 volts. Alright, let's just turn it up all the way and see what we get. Okay, so we're just a hair under 14 volts. It's drawing 74 milliamps. The bulb is lighting up just a little tiny bit, but we've got 240 volts coming out. Of course, that's likely to be pulled down when we try to power up a tube, but it is working. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the frequency, see if we can get this current down. Let's see, it's going up, so let's turn it the other way. Okay, it's starting to go down. Right, 18 milliamps, can we get down any further? Okay, it's starting to go up again, so I'm backing up. Finding that sweet spot, which seems to be right about there. I have no idea what frequency we're at, but... We've got that down from 70 milliamps to about 11 milliamps, so whatever frequency we're putting into this transformer right now, that's where it's at its most efficient. Although the voltage seems to have gone down a little bit, but... Better be safe than sorry. Well, according to my scope, the frequency is 93 kilohertz. Well, the frequency is 93 kilohertz, and boom. Okay, I had a cassette master moment there. But, yeah, our frequency is 93 kilohertz. So I'm going to say this transformer was built for around 100 kilohertz operation. But I think right now, we should connect a tube up to this and see how well it performs. Right, so... Just typical. What the heck is going on out there? <laughs> yep, this is a typical day in my neighborhood. Anyway, we got a tube. Okay, well, I made a little bit of a boo boo here. I've effed up, but not in a really big way. So, I've got the circuit powered up. The tube is glowing merrily, but I forgot to plug the grounds for the MOSFETs in after I'd measured the frequency that this circuit was putting out. So right now, it's only providing this valve with just 4 volts HT. Alright. And check this out. Let me just turn that thing down. Because I've got the output of this valve connected to my mixer. And that's connected to my amplifier. Check that out. It's passing a signal. And not only that, it is actually amplifying. Maybe only amplifying by about two or three times. But I'm surprised we're even, it's even doing that. Well, anyway, I better plug in the grounds for my MOSFETs. So the valve actually gets the power it should be getting. I'm just absolutely blown away that this tube is working at such a low voltage. I mean, it shouldn't be able to do that. But it is. 
All right, so just plug in my ground wire so I can ground the MOSFETs. Um, I'm going to turn the amplifier down because I know when the voltage going to the tubes increases, we'll have more gain. I instantly hear something. Okay, so we've gone up to 15 volts HT. But the hums come back. As a matter of fact, I don't... As a matter of fact, I think we've got less amplification like this. Which is kind of weird. But I'm going to turn the voltage up. And see how far we can go. Okay, 100 volts. 150 volts, 157 volts. Let's see what kind of amplification we have. I'd say it's about the same. I've got the amplifier turned up to about where it was before. I don't know, maybe. No, we do seem to have a bit more amplification. Not much, though. But the hums come back. Okay, so it seems like all that stuff was not needed. So I'm now powering the tube from my power supply at just 12 volts HT. So 12 volts for the filaments, 12 volts for the um, HT. Well, as you can hear, it's working, but we've got a boatload of hum. Well, if things don't work, like they say, stick it in a metal box. Alright, so I'm just going to take this ground wire and I'm going to attach it to the case. That's removed some of the hum. Alright, let's turn it on again. Wait for the filaments to warm up. Well, I would say that's working a lot better. It's not nearly as much hum this time. And this is... This little valve is boosting my microphone quite considerably. I mean, right now, I'm speaking about... With microphone about one and a half feet away from my mouth. And if I had this microphone plugged into my mixer normally, because the output of this is going into the microphone input, but if I had if I, if I had this microphone plugged into my mixer normally, I would have to, you know, I'd have to have the levels turn cranked all the way up and I'd have to have my mouth my microphone practically inside my mouth for it to actually pick up something. So yeah. 12 volts HT we're getting enough amplification, it's providing a nice boost for the microphone. Putting it in this metal box helps with the hum. Let's put another metal box on top of it. Oh, I don't think we've got any hum at all now. Okay, well I've discovered why this tube was working so well at such low voltages. I just had a look at the data sheets. And this is designed for those kind of voltages. I thought this was like a um, ECC83 or, you know, 12X7. And so, as you can see, we've got the data sheet up here. And look what it says on the plate voltage. Let's just zoom in on that. If I can figure out how to do it. See, there we go, see? Plate voltage, 12.6 volts. And earlier on, in an experiment that I did with this tube, trying to power it up, I tried to power it up on 300 volts. So no wonder it wasn't working too well. I didn't film that, but then there was the one that you did see, where I was trying to make a switch mode supply for it just now, where I tried to power it on about 150 volts, I think it was. Because I thought this tube would need high voltage, but now it turns out we don't need it. I should have checked this data sheet further than just look at the pinout. So it's a good thing, really. That means I don't need to design a high voltage power supply to use this too. So, after all that, turns out that all I need to power up these tubes is 12 volts. I wish I'd have looked that up. I wish I'd have looked that data sheet up fully instead of just looking up the pinout for the tubes. 
it would have saved me a whole lot of trouble. But anyway, this is the circuit that I've come up so far. And I say so far because it's not finished yet. This is only just part of what I'm doing. The rest of it is going to come up in a few days. So until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye.